Okay, so welcome to the ZMY Begin class. Starting in child's pose, big toes together, knees apart, sit back on the heels. Extend the arms forward, forehead to the floor or a block. And we're gonna breathe here. So if you have any, because our bodies are not that warmed up yet, if you have any pinching or anything in the thighs or the groin area, you can use your hands to rotate the skin out. And that might give you some more room to let the belly hang between the legs. We're gonna connect with the breath. Deep inhales and long exhales. And as you do this, see if you can expand the rib cage evenly as you inhale. Feel all four sides, so to say, of the rib cage expanding at the same time. Feel the spine get long. And as you push your hands into the mat, your sitting bones can get heavier towards the feet. I'm reading day 147 in Rolf Gates' book that we love so much. Becoming human means discovering our fullness and learning to live from it, from that space. And that's a quote by John Wellwood. And then he explains, bring your all to your practice. Do not use it as a means to control your weight or your appearance or the effects of aging or anything else. Let your practice be a means to discover your fullness. Be vulnerable, be sad, be happy be mad, but just be there and let it happen. And so all of those things that he talks about are certainly side effects, positive side effects of, of doing yoga, but the transformation, the opportunity of, of the transformation that it gives us to be the best version of ourselves is really the gift. And so for our begin practice today, we'll practice from that mindset just feeling full and whole and nurtured. Take a few more breaths in your child's pose. And then lift the head so you can come to hands and knees. And we'll begin our Vitalasana or cat pose. So knees hip width apart, set up your hands, spread the fingers. Just feel the tops of the feet to the knees and the hands touching the mat for a moment and connect. Bring some mindfulness. And we'll begin the breath as we inhale, lifting the tailbone, dropping the spine and lifting the chin. Let's take two breaths here. And then exhale, let the head drop last as you arch the back and we'll take two breaths, pushing the floor away. Let the head dangle here. And then inhale, lift the tail and the chin. Try to release the muscles around the spine and then exhale, arch. After you do two rounds of breath, arching the back, you can go ahead and just go back and forth and move with the breath. So on an inhale, dip. And on an exhale, arch. And do this three or four times. and then come back to a flat back or a neutral spine. 
We're gonna cross at the ankles and have a seat, legs out in front. So you can use the strap or not use the strap. Um, if you're using the strap, put it around the ball mounds of the, the feet. If you're not using a strap, you're still gonna sit up nice and tall. So take a strap in each hand. Inhale, lengthen the spine, sit up nice and tall, feel the tilt in the pelvis. Activate the legs, so press the back of the legs into the mat. And then it, on your next inhale, scoop up the belly. And as you exhale, fold forward. So it feels like you're hinging at the hips and then pulling the shoulder blades towards each other. If you don't have a strap, you're just gonna walk your fingertips. And so this forward folding is not all about flexibility. You're gonna activate the muscles in your back and try to push yourself with your muscles as well to strengthen the back. Your chin stays lifted, aiming towards the shins. And if you feel like you can grab further down on the strap, go ahead and do that. If you're reaching your feet, let go of the strap. We're gonna take three or four more breaths here. So get comfortable <laughs> or uncomfortable. Find comfort in being uncomfortable. Inhale, lift all the way up. Bring the bottoms of the feet together. Drop the knees out to the sides. We're just giving our legs a break here before we move on to the next one. So hold on to the ankles for stability and try to soften the hip joints, letting the knees hang out to the sides. Still pull the shoulders up and back. We're just taking a few breaths here. And then grab the knees, bring the knees back together. And you can straighten the left leg and keep the right knee bent. So with the right knee bent, drop it out to the side for our Janu Shirshasana. Grab the strap, put it around the ball of the left foot, maybe. If you already know that you can grab your foot safely, go ahead and just let go of the strap or use your fingertips. But same thing, engage the legs. Inhale, lengthen, scoop up the belly. And then exhale, fold. Just grab wherever you need to on the leg. And shoulder blades are flat, drawing towards the tailbone. One or two more breaths here. And then inhale, come all the way up. Bring the right knee in and the left knee out. Inhale, lengthen, all of the same things. Set yourself up, activate the right leg, and then exhale, fold. Find one spot to look at, your drishti, your focus point. It doesn't matter if it's your ankle, your foot, your knee. Just keep it in one, one focus point. One or two more breaths here. and then inhale all the way up. So we're gonna do a, a prep pose, which we have the Janu Shirshasana where our knee is hanging out, okay? The prep pose for that, which to me seems to be the next level, not the preparing for this pose, is we take this leg and we actually bend the knee and bring the foot behind us. So try to do that in a way where the heel is close to 
the butt or the hip. We definitely don't want the foot to be out here because that's gonna hurt the knee. So just pull it towards the body. And then the knees are gonna separate as much as they can. Once you're here, I want you to take the left thigh and kind of tuck it under or untuck from the outside so that the knee and the toes can point straight up. And so you don't feel like you're tipping over. And so from here, we're gonna bring our left arm to the inside of the leg. So just see if the forearm touches the floor. If it doesn't, which for most people it's not, you're gonna take your block and put it on the inside of the leg and then your forearm will rest on that. And then from here, we're gonna rotate the right shoulder back. So we're doing like a forward fold, we're you know, extending, we're twisting. So with the right shoulder back, you're starting to come into this twist and just bring that right arm up. If this is your max, then just stay here. But if you feel like you can reach and do this lateral stretch also, so reaching with your right arm, then do that. And we'll take a few breaths here. Try to rotate the chest up towards the ceiling. And then on your next exhale, bring the right arm down and come back to seated. It's very complicated. I don't know why this one is the, the prep for the, the easy one, but there you go. You can just straighten the right leg, maybe bounce the knees out for a moment. And then we're gonna do this on the other side. So bend the left knee, bring the foot behind you. This is also gonna get into the quadriceps as well. So when we start doing the standing stuff, will be nice and warmed up in the legs. Once you have the foot or the heel touching the body, separate the knees as much as you can. Bring your right forearm to the ground and if it's not gonna reach, put it on top of a block. Untuck this right leg if you haven't done that already. Inhale the left arm up and then exhale, reach for the foot. Eventually, <clears throat> you're gonna be able to reach the toes without squishing your body. So just keep reaching. You don't have to grab the toes, just reach. So here we have the left side of the body really open and the right side of the body is really closed. So trying to find even breath here and deep inhalations will be a little bit more tricky. So just try to get those deep breaths. We're gonna do two more. And then exhale, bring the left arm down and come back up to seated. Use your hand to bring the left leg forward, bounce the knees around a little bit. Good. And then lie down on your back. Once you're lying on your back, let the hips settle. Let the spine settle. And then one at a time, grab the knees. Once you have both knees, rock left to right. Okay, so bringing the feet down we're gonna do the internal rotation exercise that we do. Your legs are warmed up for this. You're gonna straighten the left leg. You're gonna hug onto the right knee. You can interlace your fingers. You can just hold it, whatever feels good. Knee towards the chest. And then we lengthen through the heel of the left foot. You're gonna lift the left leg off the floor, just a couple of inches, not too high, like two or three inches and then rotate the toes in. So you're internally rotating from the hip socket. And then left, lift maybe another inch. So you're just a few inches off the ground and you're lifting from the outer thigh. So strengthening that outer hip. And we're gonna breathe here, five, six breaths. Just keep it up, keep the foot flexed, soften the shoulders, don't lift with your face, keep the face soft.
and then go ahead and lower. Bring the right foot down, straighten the leg. Yeah, if you lift the leg too high, it gets too easy. So if it feels easy, lower the foot a little bit, hug the left knee, lengthen through the right heel. Keep both feet flexed and then lift the right leg, just a couple inches, internally rotate from the hip socket. So the toes are gonna be pointing inward. Lift another inch or so from the outer leg and breathe. Can you find slow, deep breaths here, even though you're using a lot of muscular energy? And then go ahead, lower the leg. Don't, leave, don't let the left leg go yet. We're gonna interlace our fingers behind the knee. So your fingers are interlaced behind the left knee, draw the knee towards the body and then flex the foot, press the heel up towards the ceiling. Just get the leg as straight as you can. If it doesn't get, I just, your hamstrings will stop you. You'll know when to stop. So keep the shoulders soft and the right leg active. One or two more breaths here. And then drop the heel towards the body. Let this left foot down, straighten the leg. One last time, bending the right knee, interlace behind the leg, knee up towards the body. Left leg is active, feet are flexed, kick the heel up towards the ceiling. Shoulder soft. Release the tongue, jaw, throat, and breathe. And drop the heel, drop the foot, straighten the leg, take a long stretch here before we flip over. Be sure to bend your knees, roll onto your side and sit yourself up that way, protect the back. And then come back to hands and knees. We're gonna go up into downward facing dog. So curl the toes under and lift the hips up and back. Begin to pedal the feet out, pressing the heels towards the mat, maybe alternate pressing or do them both at the same time. Go up onto the toes. Rock the hips back and forth, your pose. First down dog, move however you want. Okay, so from here, we're gonna find some stillness and then look up at our hands so we can walk forward. Take the biggest steps that you can, even if it's difficult. And then bring your hands to your shins. We're gonna lift halfway up. And so this is an easy way to lock out, the, lock out the legs. If you are flexible, keep a micro bend in the knees. That way it forces the sitting bones to lift. And then we're protecting the hamstring attachments. Nobody wants yoga, but that's what it's called. Bend the knees, inhale all the way up. Palms together, exhale. Keep your hands in front of your heart, find Tadasana legs. So line up the inner edges of the feet. Sometimes we bring our big toes together, you decide. Lift the chest, close your eyes if you can, or have a soft gaze on a focus point. And as we're standing here in this pose, feel balance. Balance is what leads to feeling that fullness and that wholeness. So shift your weight around, reach up as you press down, do all the things to find complete balance in the standing pose.
And then you can blink the eyes open. We're gonna inhale and bring the hands straight up. Exhale, bring the hands down. Three rounds like that. Inhale, reach up. Palms together and down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. One more time, follow the breath. Inhale, reach. Exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Good. Release the hands, turn sideways on your mat like I am and separate the feet. Grab your block. And then we'll focus on setting up the feet. So be sure that your heels are lined up for this. We focus a lot on the strength of the legs in this posture, making sure the inner edges of the feet are straight, making sure that our feet are wide enough apart. But sometimes we forget to focus on the fact that if I were to draw a line behind your heels, it should be even. So just focus on that before we get started. And then engage all the muscles. Lift through the crown of the head. And I want you to bring your fingertips to your hip creases and start to push them back. So your body will tip forward as you're pushing the hip sockets back. Bring your hands down to the block, even if you can go further. So we get this lifting action in the sitting bones. A lot of us will shift our weight to our heels because you feel it more in the hamstrings there, but I want you to shift your weight towards the balls of the feet. So it's even and the muscles kick in. Inhale, lengthen through the crown of the head. Exhale, hinge forward a little bit more, flatten the block. Pull the shoulders back. And at this point you can drop the head. We're gonna lengthen maybe one more time. So inhale, lift, lengthen through the crown of the head. Exhale, see if you can fold a little bit more or just stay where you were. So your hands will be flat on the mat or on the block. Let the head dangle. If you've shifted your weight back to the heels again, just be aware of that. If you're feeling rounding in the upper back, go to the block. The block has three settings. So whichever one helps you keep the shoulder blades moving towards each other. And we're gonna take three more breaths here. Good. Inhale, lift the head, lengthen through the crown of the head and through the tailbone. Bring your hands to your waist as you exhale. Press the feet, inhale, come all the way up. And then exhale, bring the feet together. Good. Go to the front of your mat. We're gonna do two sun salutation A. Inhale, reach up, exhale, fold. Inhale, look up and exhale, step back, lower all the way down, elbows kiss the sides of the body, use your knees if you need to. Inhale, up and exhale, child's pose for five breaths, hands together, drop them behind the neck. One, two, three, four, five. Hands down, inhale, lift up to hands and knees. Curl the toes under, exhale to down dog. Inhale, look up, step forward. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, reach all the way up. 
bring your palms together and exhale, hands in front of the heart. Okay, one more time and we're gonna change it up the second time. So come back to the front of your mat. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. And exhale, step back. Chaturanga, all the way down. Inhale, lift up. And then exhale, back to child's pose. This time, rest your arms along the sides of the body. Rest your forehead on a block if your head does not touch the mat. Five breaths here. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Palms back to the mat. Inhale, lift the head. Come to hands and knees. Curl the toes under, lift the hips up and back. We're gonna inhale and bring the right leg up. And then exhale, bring the right leg forward. So as we bring the right leg forward, we're dropping the back heel, press the feet and press up into a warrior one. So find your balance. Hips are square to the front of your mat. Arms are up, shoulders are back. Find your breath here. Keep pressing the outer edge of the back foot, the inner edge of the front foot. Good. And so now we're gonna keep the arms up we're gonna straighten the right leg and pivot on our feet so that we can do the left leg. Once you're facing the back of your mat, adjust your feet however you need to, and then bend the left knee. And if you need to bring the arms down, go ahead and bring them down, okay? And we'll take a few breaths here. Keep wrapping this right hip forward so your hips are square to the front of the mat. And now bring the hands down. We're gonna safely come into warrior two. So you're still facing the back of your mat and I want you to lift the back heel so that you can pivot your foot and open up the hips, okay? So now we're facing the back of the mat with the arms extended, left knee still bent and we're looking over the left fingertips in warrior two. On your next inhale, straighten the left knee, bring the toes in, right toes out. Now your right toes are facing the front of your mat and you'll bend the knee here. So we can do our warrior two on the other side. The upper body is like between two panes of glass lined up with your mat. Look over the right fingertips. Lift everything in and up. One more breath here. Hands down, straighten the right knee, bring the toes in, and then you can walk or hop your feet together and give the legs a break. Woo. Grab your block for a balance pose. I'm not gonna tell you what this pose is <clears throat> because there's always preconceived notions of what we can and can't do. So just follow my directions and I'm gonna guide you through it. So the, the block is gonna stay on the tallest setting in front of us. We only need a little bit of space. So it could be the middle of your mat or whatever. And then with our feet, just hip width apart or sitting bone width apart, either one is fine. We're gonna to start to tip forward, just coming into a regular forward fold or ut Uttanasana. 
and our hands are gonna go to the block. If your back feels nice and straight and you're engaged in the legs, go a little further, flatten the block. And if you feel you can bring the hands all the way to the floor, you can do that too. But the flat block might be the best for right now. Bend the knees just a little bit and you're gonna start to lift the right leg up. Point the toes, lift the right leg up. And then here, if your elbows are really bending, you can bring your hands to the floor. So this is like a warrior three, but it's on the floor. Good. Take one more breath here. And then bend both knees, bring the feet together. Bring your hands to the block just to come halfway up first. And then hands to the waist. On an inhale, you're gonna stand back up. So you just did the standing splits, which is definitely not a beginner pose, but if you're using a block and modifying as needed and listening to your body, you can take any pose to different levels, right? All right, let's do the other side. Feet hip width apart. It takes just as much strength as it does flexibility for that pose too. You're standing on one leg. In order to lift the leg, you have to use the muscles. It's a lot, right? Okay, so start to fold forward, hands to the block. You already know where you're supposed to be here. And so this leg might be tighter or more open. It might look different than the other one. Bend the knees slightly and then start to lift the left leg, point the toes. We want to activate the quadriceps to help us pull the leg up. You can bring your hands to the floor maybe. And so eventually we do walk closer to the leg and start to grab the leg. But for now, we're just lifting. We'll take another breath or two here. And then bend both knees, bring the feet together, slow controlled movement, hands to the block to lift halfway up, hands to the waist, inhale, come all the way up. Whew. <laughs> and then just shake the legs out a little bit. Let me find my thing here. Come back to the front of your mat. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. And exhale, step back, lower down. Inhale, lift up. And now exhale back to down dog. Inhale, look up and step through. So step forward, exhale, fold, bring the feet together, start to drop the sitting bones, knees are together. We're coming up into chair pose. So weight is in the back of the body and then the arms are up, shoulders back. We're gonna try to take five breaths here. Don't have the tailbone sticking up, make sure you drop it down. And then we're gonna just inhale and come to standing. Yeah, grab your strap. That's good for leg stuff, right? <laughs> so strap in the right hand, we're just doing the monkey arms here. Pinky faces rotates in towards the midline of the body, then the elbow. Eventually you're gonna be able to grab your fingers. Like I, your shoulders might be tight, but try to, do, try to see where you are instead of doing what you're used to. So as you drop the strap, the fingertips are gonna be pointing down and the palm will be flat on the back. The left arm, the thumb will be down and then the palm will be facing out as you reach up. So you can either grab the strap here or see how close you are to the fingertips. And one side you might be able to do and the other side you might not. 
which is the case for me. Try to keep the chin lifted parallel to the floor. And we're also paying attention to our feet, how we're standing, our alignment, and also our breath. One more here. And then go ahead and release. Whew. Take the strap with the left hand. See where we are here. Rotate the pinky in. That's gonna ground the shoulder, the humeri into the socket. Bend the elbow. So the fingers are reaching down in between the shoulder blades. Right thumb down, palm faces out. And we reach as far as we can and maybe grab the fingers or the strap. Usually the strap. <laughs> Back to the alignment in the body, find your breath. and release. You can drop the strap off, come to the front of your mat, inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, look up. And exhale, step back. We're gonna just come down to our knees cross at the ankles and lie down. Once you're lying down, bend the knees, let the hips settle. And then bring your left ankle to the right thigh. Interlace behind the right leg, and then draw the knee towards the body. Keep both feet flexed here. This is our supine pigeon. The more you just not pushing with your hand, but just shift your knee away from you, your left knee shifted away from you to square the pelvis, that might bring you deeper into this. if you need it. But I mean, you might have an easy time in this pose, but maybe the breath is what you're working on. So just continue to breathe. We're taking two more breaths here, full breaths. And then go ahead and bring the right foot to the floor, left foot to the floor, and we'll move on to the other side. So right ankle to the left leg, interlace behind the left thigh. Make any adjustments, shift the right knee away from you, keep the feet flexed. Soften the shoulders, the throat, the neck, all of that is released right now. The head is resting on the floor. If you're really having a hard time, like struggling reaching for the leg, you could rest your head on a block. As long as the head's not hanging in the air, that is not good for the neck. Find your breath. We're gonna take two more. And then go ahead and release. Both feet to the floor. You can straighten the legs just to stretch everything out. 
And then we're gonna do one last thing here. So bring the arms down, bend the knees. We're gonna do bridge pose. And remember here that we want to have that space between the knees. We want the, the feet, the knees and the hips all on, on the same line, okay? All parallel to each other. Shoulder blades are gonna be flat on the mat. So they're not poking into the, the floor. And then we're just gonna keep the elbows bent and the palms facing towards each other for today. And the reason we're doing this and not interlacing is to just work on keeping a broad back and a broad chest. So everything is staying open. You're just gonna be pushing your elbows into the floor. Okay, so activate the feet, press them into the floor, inhale, lift the pelvis up towards the ceiling. Don't let the knees hang open, just keep pressing the inner edges of the feet and the heels. You can still walk your shoulders together a little bit. Keep the chin lifted. Two more breaths here. Use the muscles in the legs, the front of the body, and also the shoulder blades are pushing into the, into the back. And then lower pelvis first, and then unwind the spine. We're gonna go up one more time. Just take a breather here. And then prepare for your second back bend. Press the feet, inhale, lift. Breathe. And exhale, lower. Lower the pelvis, unwind the spine, give your spine a moment to settle. And then tilt the pelvis back. So your lower back is smashing into the mat and then bring the knees up to the chest. Together, apart, you can even go into happy baby here. But we're gonna rock left to right. Whatever you decide to do with your legs is up to you. Another moment or two. And then slow down your rocking. Bring the feet to the floor. One last stretch. Circle the wrists and the ankles. And then when you're finished with your stretch, you'll get ready for Shavasana. So if you'd like to put on socks, a sweatshirt, a blanket, cover the eyes, anything to prepare and get as comfortable as possible, you can do that. And when you are ready, you'll separate the feet, bring the arms down, palms up. Be sure the chin is a little bit lower than the forehead. You do want a curve in the lower spine. And as you begin to exhale, feel the muscles soften and release. As if with each exhalation, the muscles are softening or melting away from the bones. And as you continue to soften, feel the bones get heavy towards the back of the body. And feeling the body get heavier and heavier, sinking into the floor. And for the next few moments, 
feel any sensations that are happening in the body and follow the breath. Allow your inhalations to begin to deepen.
And when you're ready, you can begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes slowly. Moving into wrists and ankles and taking whatever other movement might feel good for the body here. And then after another breath or two, you'll begin to roll onto your right side using your arm as a pillow. And we'll just stay here for a moment and pause and enjoy these last few moments of stillness. And then let the head stay heavy as you push yourself back to a seated position. Bringing your hands together in front of your heart. Thank you for letting me guide you today. The teacher in me honors and appreciates the teacher in you. Thank you. Thank you so much.